Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently got a question from a viewer wanting to know whether or not I used a crawler style topwater bait. For those of you that are not familiar with a crawler, some people refer to them as a creeper, some people refer to them as a crawler, but basically it's a winged topwater bait. This is the Jackal Pompadour. They're very, very entertaining baits to use because it looks like a swimmer. To me, it looks like somebody swimming through the water as you return it back to the boat. They create a very unique sound, uh, just a very unusual topwater bait. And the simple answer to that question is yes, I absolutely do use uh, creeper style or crawler style topwater baits. But I say that because uh, I say that with a little bit of caveat because I've got very specific times when I like to use them. To me, it is not a topwater bait that you can throw year round and produce as good or better than other topwater baits. Now, having said that, there are some specific times when they are hard to beat. So I want to share with you a little bit of my experience with them uh, and a little bit of my background as to when and where I like to use them. Uh, before I do get into that, though, I do want to remind you guys that if you're looking for some help on your local lakes, please check out the lake breakdowns that I do. I've done well over 100 at this point, and if I have not covered the lake in your area, you can always request me to do your lake. Uh, but it's 40 waypoints based on a specific time of year, so you get very good detailed places to go catch some fish. Also, if you're looking for uh, maybe a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with me, I do one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons where we do a Zoom call and we just can go back and forth and actually look at the maps and talk about how to approach certain lakes. Uh, so both of those links I'll provide in the video description for you. And uh, they're just good ways to get a little bit more direction on the lakes and the areas that you're fishing. So if you want to fish a crawler, we can talk about crawler style baits all along. So I, I got to give you a little bit of a background story on this bait specifically. You know, the Pompadour has been out for, uh, I'm going to say probably seven or eight years. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe it's been a lot longer, but I feel like it really kind of hit the scene back around like 2015. And uh, the one of the first times I ever saw it in action, I was I was practicing for the U.S. Open, the One Bass U.S. Open on Lake Mead. I want to say it was like 2015-ish. Uh, and one of the other Bridgeford team members is Joe Uribe. And his dad, Joe Uribe Sr., uh, was there with Joe. And I said, hey, do you want to jump in and, and practice with me for a day? It was the first time I've ever been at Lake Mead. And this is one of the baits that he pulled out. He's a phenomenal fisherman, the whole Uribe family. Uh, Rachel, Joe Jr., Joe Sr., they're all phenomenal fishermen. So when he pulled it out, it really caught my eye because he's not just going to pull out anything that's not going to work. Like that's how good of a fishing family they are. So we were going down the bank fishing and in my head, I'm like, I just don't feel like this is the right time to be throwing this. Um, not that it was the conditions were right in my experience being that it was a very hot day. You're talking about September in the desert, you know, hundred degree days. I had that all worked fine. The issue I had was we were more covering water and I was not fishing like shallow targets. I was fishing more of a, a deeper flat, which had some grass on it, which was kind of tough to find at that point, but we were probably fishing 10 to 15 foot of water. And it was not long before he caught the biggest bass that I saw that entire week on Lake Mead. It was like a three and a half pounder. And if you're familiar with Lake Mead, especially during September, a two pound class fish is considered fantastic. Three pounders are absolute gold. So a three and a half pounder was a really nice fish. And we got to talking about it and he was like, this is one of my better topwater baits during the summer period, especially when you're talking about clear water. And that was funny because when he said that, and again, I didn't really have any experience with this. I had used the Head and Crazy Crawler. Uh, this is another version or a Head and Crazy Crawler. This is a, an old, old version. This is their old mouse looking one. Uh, for some of you antique buffs out there, uh, I you probably don't know this about me, but I like to collect a lot of, of antique lures as well. So I've got a a pile of antique lures. I'm more of a creek chub guy than a heading guy, but I still have a bunch of these. And uh, so when I was growing up, it was a bait that I kind of gravitated to. 
and I have caught a bunch of fish on the newer versions of the Head and Crazy Crawlers, but this was kind of what I was familiar with. And then Jackal came out with this guy, and I was like, all right, well, it's definitely an updated version of the old Head and Crazy Crawler. But most of my experience with creeper-style baits is actually in the musky world. Uh, this is a musky safari bait, one of my favorite creepers. And this is what, you know, I was used to. They even get bigger. I mean, in the musky world, this is this is normal size. But when Joe told me he liked throwing it in the warmest time of year, one of the things that really rung out to me is that's the same way I feel about these in the musky world. In the musky world, they really start to get good from like the hottest part of the summer into the fall. The creepers are generally not my go-to bait for, for musky during the first part of the summer as the water's still getting warmer. It seems like they really like these once the water gets warm. So it was, it was an interesting comparison that he provided with me. And since then, in seeing the action that he's had, you know, I've bought a bunch of these baits and, and had a lot of success with the creeper style topwaters and this jackal pompadour. Now, the one thing I'll say with that, though, is it's not a bait that I like to just cover water with. If you haven't fished these, they're generally a pretty slow bait to fish. You know, if you reel them too fast, they can tend to blow out. So it's more of a bait for me that I like to fish around specific targets that I think the fish are holding on, or if I'm fishing flats where there are fish that I'm, you know, that I know are there, which is basically what happened when I was fishing with Joe Uribe on Lake Mead. The flat where he got that bite turned out to be one of the best areas that I fished, and I ended up finishing like I think 26 or 27th out of 200 and some boats in that tournament. And I caught a pile of fish where he caught that big fish. So we happened, he happened to find that spot with this bait while we were fishing. And it turned out to be, you know, a good on Lake Mead, a 10 to 15 foot grass flats, kind of a shallower flat to begin with. But I like to throw these baits basically in areas where I feel very confident there are fish. Uh, so like I said, isolated targets, whether that's a lay down maybe around docks, maybe an isolated patch of grass, or I like to fish them and creep them over flats where I know there's fish. Uh, and the other thing I'll add to it is I prefer them in clearer water. Now, I'm not saying gin clear water, but I like to have a couple feet of visibility or more. It just seems like this bait has very good drawing power. The clearer the water gets, you can draw them up from further. And I think that has to do with the fact that it's a slow moving topwater bait and it's very tantalizing. You know, the bait, like I said, there's not many other baits that actually have as much motion as these as when they come through the water, side to side, up and down and rotating motion. So if you've got an area where there's fish holding, a slow moving creeper coming through that area has very good draw power. It's, it's one of those baits where the fish just tend to uh, hit it out of vengeance. It's almost like they don't want it there because it is an intimidating bait. So that's, that's the, those are the main areas I like to fish it. But I would add that it's a very good bait to throw during the springtime as well. When you know there's bass on beds, it's a good bait to bring over because of the fact that it's a slow moving topwater bait. So if you've got a bass that's guarding a bed or a female that's hanging around a bed or you've got fish that are starting to guard fry, generally speaking, a slower moving bait is better through those areas because the fish feel more intimidated by it. They feel like it's more of a threat to the eggs or to the fry. And this can be a really good bait. So there's generally like a, I don't know, I don't know a month long period in the spring where I do like to throw it. But from the post spawn period, uh, after they're done guarding fry into like 4th of July weekend, it's generally not a very good topwater bait for me. And I, I don't know if that's because the fish are in more transition and therefore you're better off covering more water, but it just, it does not generate the same bites. But once you get to the point where you're at peak temperature in the summer and you're moving into, you know, like Labor Day, even after Labor Day, depending where you're at. Uh, but when that water temps are like at its absolute peak, it again becomes a phenomenal topwater bait. So if you haven't tried one like this pompadour yet, I would recommend giving it a try. Not only does it generate some really good strikes in terms of size of fish, it's one of those baits that's just a fun bait to fish. I mean, that's really one of the reasons why 
I love fishing them for musky so much. You know, in, in the musky world, you're shooting for a couple of bites a day is a pretty good day on the water. But it's like they're so entertained to retrieve back. It's just one of those baits that is fun to fish. And, you know, as much as I'm all about catching fish, I like to have fun on the water too. And a creeper is one of those baits that just kind of puts a smile on your face because it feels like he's he's swimming back to the boat every on every cast. So those are things to keep in mind. There's a few other brands out there. Uh, I, I got to tell you, you know, the Pompadour is the one in terms of today's newer versions that I prefer. The Head and Crazy Crawler to me, the, the ones that are still made, don't really compare to these. They don't run as true, they don't run as well, and they tend to blow out more on the retrieve. So I this is the one I throw. There are some other ones. Megabass has one, uh, and it seems like they're becoming more popular. So there's other versions out there. I just can't speak to those. But uh, if you haven't thrown one, I would recommend giving one a try because they can be excellent and they can be uh, very good at outfishing other top orders based on some of those situations that I provided to you. So I'd love to know in the comments section, have you guys been throwing uh, creepers or crawlers, whatever you want to uh, want to call them? Uh, if so, have you had success? Have you not had success? Which baits do you like so that the rest of the viewers can learn from you guys as well? If you enjoyed the video, Hit the uh, like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, we'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.